Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present my shuttle launch script by request. I will explain how it works and right from the get-go I want to issue some caveats. This is not how you're supposed to write a launch script for the space shuttle and that is because I wrote it based on how I think which is very different from how computers think or are supposed to think. And so I'm forcing the computer to do human things, kind of, uh, instead of doing what is more natural to computers. So this is not the approved method, if you will. This just happens to work. So, yeah. So I don't really want a whole lot of suggestions from people about the launch script. I'm telling you how it's done, how I do it. I'm not looking for improvements. This worked in 1.1.3, worked in 1.3.1, worked in 1.8.1, unlike my re-entry script, which I have to tinker with every time. And in fact, uh, I, I can't really present to you the re-entry script because I was working on it just yesterday. I was changing things. So that is a whole other business. But the launch script is pretty consistent. And uh, there's uh, been one change, and that's actually this toggle action group six, and that's because the most recent version of the shuttle has the fuel cells very much required on launch. Uh, previously, the batteries have been enough to supply electrical power during launch, and then you could activate the fuel cells in orbit. Uh, but it seems like the batteries are negligible on the shell right now. Uh, basically, they run out in about six minutes or five to six minutes. So, yeah, we have to activate uh, Action Group 6, which is the fuel cells right away. And uh, SAS off, you notice. Uh, this is to make sure that SAS is not conflicting with the KOS script. Sometimes SAS helps. Um, if the It's complicated, but in this case, we don't need it. Lock throttle to zero, obviously, you just make sure that the throttle is down. And now the apoapsis and periapsis look a little bit weird, and that's because, to a large extent, the shuttle ignores them. Remember, the it's not really getting to orbit when it shuts off its engines. It's uh, still a suborbital trajectory, so they can let go of the external tank and have that deorbit, and then it has to get into a full orbit with the OMS engines. So, these... Are, I wouldn't say arbitrary, but pretty close to arbitrary. They just need to be something in space will be fine. Um, these numbers happen to work fine. Uh, you know, why the periapsis is uh, higher than the apoapsis? Just leave it alone. <laughs> this is more for stuff for the other rockets. Uh, target inclination, we're going to the ISS inclination here. And so I'll sh show you how that happens. Um, thrust to weight ratio is like, uh, whatever it says. I don't know if it's actually right right now. Uh, it says 1.56 there. Uh, so 1.62 is probably it without the payload. It's got uh, some payload in the bay, like 17 tons or so. So, but that's not going to have a huge effect. And similarly, uh, here the thrust to weight ratio at the start of the second stage, which would be the vacuum thrust to weight ratio. Uh, without any payload is 0.98, with payload is 0.95. Again, I don't think that's going to make a huge difference. And of course, the max thrust weight ratio, the end thrust weight ratio, uh, right now with payload is 5.18, but uh, it's 5.86 without the payload. So, But again, those aren't going to have a huge effect on the shuttle because of the peculiarities of the shuttle. Uh, those are more important for regular rockets. There are no fairings, obviously. The target roll is the current roll to the on the left wing on your nav ball. So this 270 is that 270 right there. That's just to make sure that uh, you've got the pad orientation right. Otherwise, it's going to want to roll right off of the pad right right on launch. It'll do it, but you know, you don't necessarily want to do it. Launch direction. So it's going to launch northward instead of southward. That uh, gets factored into the azimuth calculation. Uh, so that's down here. That's a function that we'll see at the bottom. Uh, so we could launch southward. We just changed that to a 1. Uh, this is all uh, turn parameter stuff that I never touch. Um, in order to adjust that for other rockets sometimes, I 
in later versions of the script, because this is an old script, this is from 1.1.3, 1. 1. um, I've made more recent versions of the script where I add multiplier a multiplier called steepness, and I just shove all this stuff down below in a function instead of having it up here, and I just have a single number called set steepness, and that affects all of these appropriately so that you can just change that number and it'll determine how steep the trajectory is if that needs to be tweaked. Close throttle, uh, that's just after we get into space, what throttle will set, that's for specific rockets. It's not what I use for the shuttle anyway. Um, correction factor, these are little corrections that makes to its trajectory as necessary, especially to match the inclination. Um, Target pitch, well, that's just the starting pitch, so 90 straight up. And uh, heading adjustment, 90 eastward. And roll check, so the shuttle does a roll. And we want to go from the 270 that it starts off with uh, to the upside down position, so a 180 position. So negative 90 is the roll thing. And it'll, so it'll just uh, adjust accordingly until it gets to the inverted position. And so if the target roll here was 291, which on uh, some launches, uh, some pad orientations it has been, then this down here will be negative 111. Uh, OMS start, that's just a toggle to make sure. Uh, down below I'll say to start the OMS engines, which is action group eight right now. And so it'll say toggle action group eight and then set OMS start to one. This is a standard sort of thing in programming where you have this toggle so that it doesn't repeat the same task. So otherwise, if you say toggle action group eight during a loop, it'll just keep toggling it over and over and over again and turning it off and on and off and on. So instead of having it do that, you say, if OMS start is zero, toggle action group eight, and then set OMS start to one so it doesn't do it again. And then this is the launch timer. So instead of using the in-game timer, which may be messed up, uh, you know, because of a pad wiggle or something like that, it might have started the timer, uh, we, we create our own timer inside this. So that is initialized to zero. And then the azimuth calculation. So in order to sort of bundle things together and make the script a little bit more readable, we have functions. This is one of those functions. And uh, one of the functions are down here. This is the end of the main loop at uh, line 444. The main loop stretches from this until mode zero. Uh, I put verb, I, at one point I called them verbs because of uh, of the Apollo guidance computer, but um, we can change that to mode or whatever. Uh, so that uh, when it hits mode zero, that will end the program. Uh, for now, if the radar altitude is less than 100 meters, which it ought to be, it has already set mode to one. It initially set mode to two, which would uh, jump to this function if the radar altitude is greater than 100, which would be if you initialize, if you started the script after launch. Technically, I should say, uh, well, it, yeah, it's technically I should say 150 there to match what this has here. Anyway, uh, but we'll cover the main program loop in a bit. First, we'll take a look at that azimuth calculation. So, if the target inclination is greater than the current inclination of the ship, which it will be, because we're at Cape Canaveral at 28.6 degrees and our target inclination is 51.4. If we're going north, then it sets the launch azimuth, which is the heading it's going to go at, to this equation, which is just, that's the launch azimuth equation for you. Arc sign, uh, I'm not gonna read it out loud. And then if you're going southward, you take uh, 180 and subtract that out, right? Because, um, 180 is directly south. So you can imagine this is zero and then adding that. This is 180 and subtracting that for going south. Now, if the target inclination is less than the ship orbit inclination, so that means that like you're launching from uh, uh, Kuru or something. Uh, no, that's a bad example. Well, no, you're trying to get to a like um, equatorial orbit, right, for a geosynchronous transfer, for instance. So you're trying to get to a target inclination of zero, but uh, we're at 28.6. Well, 
from 28 point six, you can't get to zero directly. So it'll just set the launch azimuth to 90 straight east and set target inclination to uh, just, uh, I probably shouldn't do that. It could, it could sort of dogleg later on, uh, but that's more complicated. So that's that function that starts up right here before we begin our main loop. And then we have our main loop. So this, like I said, uh, sets the mode to one and then mode one is exactly what happens on launch right off the launch pad. First is make sure that we're going to be pointed in the right direction and then it throttles up, then it ignites the SSMEs, it waits five seconds, it then stages both the SRBs and launch clamps. Toggling action group one is, I, I, we don't do that, I don't do that anymore, but that was to lock the control surfaces, that's not necessary and that's not actually what the shuttle did. But I put the control surfaces on action group one for that. But uh, now we initialize, initialize our timer. So it sets ignition time to mission time, which is the mission time is the in-game time, the in-game clock. And then it sets launch time to the mission time minus the ignition time. So uh, whatever the in-game clock is, it subtracts out the time that we ignited. Well, technically it was the time that we ignited the SRBs, okay? So that's the launch time. And then we once again lock the steering because I'm paranoid about that. Uh, we wait two seconds and then we set, which would be enough to clear the tower. And then we set mode to two. Just in case we haven't cleared the tower, we wait until our altitude is uh, good height before we start doing the roll procedure. So every mode has this setting launch time to mission time minus ignition time. That's what updates our timer. Okay, so it's always looking at the game time and subtracting out the time of our ignition. So that uh, uh, so each of these modes is encapsulated. It always ends with moving on to the next mode. Uh, technically, we could double back, but I don't in this script. So it always goes on to the next mode so that it's only running this little segment first, and then it moves on to moving this segment until the end of this mode. And then it goes to mode three, and then runs on this segment. So this segment here is uh, really only operant for a little bit until we start doing our pitch maneuver. So before we start doing our pitch maneuver, it's already allowed to start its roll. At 150 meters, it starts to check on its roll. Let's just have the shuttle launch and uh, we'll talk it over as it's going. So I'm going to, first of all, turn off the fuel cells. Oh, uh, did I manage to do that? I don't know. Okay, maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe the action group only turns them on, so th th that's fine. I had turned them on because otherwise we'd lose power on the pad. So we're running this launch script. So throttle up, SRBs ignite. Wait five seconds, release. It does that, it set all the mission timer, it's displaying things. I'll show you where it displays things. And then we are past 150 meters, so we go on to here, and it's doing this roll. It's a complicated sort of thing where it's this it limits how fast it's doing the roll. So if you wanted to do it faster, you could adjust this, uh, increase the numbers. But then at a certain height, this turn altitude which is where it begins its pitch maneuver, it sets to mode three, and now this handles both pitch and the roll. So it has all the roll stuff here. I could have bundled that into a function as well, but it also starts handling pitch, and this is the main pitch equation for what determines what pitch it'll be at. It'll, it's an open loop sort of thing for the pitch at this phase. So it's not reacting to, uh, it is reacting to the altitude, that's what it's reacting to, but it's not reacting to speed. This is the bit where it throttles down, so you can see it has throttled down through max Q and the breaking the sound barrier and all that, and it throttles up again. It throttles down between 6 kilometers and 16 kilometers. And then it's also tracking the time to apoapsis, so that if the time to apoapsis gets too high, it'll slightly correct its pitch to reduce that, but for a shuttle that doesn't really happen very much. 
uh, mode 3 will end when the SRBs get released. So if launch time is greater than 2 minutes and 2 seconds, it stages off the SRBs. It uh, releases the control surfaces. It uh, locks throttle to 1, throttle up again. Uh, just to make sure if it throttle down at some point. And it uh, once again... Uh, this wait 1 before locking the heading to its uh, intended heading is meant to avoid it maneuvering while the SRBs are separating. And then it changes mode to 4 after the SRBs separate. So that's that. this segment here. It is adjusting the heading based on the launch azimuth. So it went to the heading of 45 degrees because of the launch azimuth. So this, is, this isn't just the roll. There is the roll check bit here and here and here. So that's adjusting roll, but it was also uh, going to the right launch azimuth, the 45 degrees instead of the 90 degrees, and that is the main portion here. So if it's less than uh, that, it'll if the launch azimuth is less than where it's heading right now, it'll set the heading to be less. If the launch azimuth is more than uh, what the current heading is, it'll set the heading to more. If you want to turn faster, you change this number to a higher number. And then if it's between uh, point 0.2 and point 0.2, uh, negative point 0.2 and point 0.2, it'll just hold that uh, the heading steady. So anyway, that's that bit. We've separated off the boosters, we're in mode 4. So, it'll only manage the thrust if uh, the thrust to weight ratio is more than 3, that's what that part says and it's still managing the pitch based on this equation and it's still managing the launch azimuth but we're basically at the right launch azimuth you see it's not really going changing its heading at all so it's constantly increasing the inclination to the 51.4 degrees based on that calculation that we had before that I showed you in the launch azimuth thing there's this direct calculation function that constantly gets updated every time the that segment of the loop gets run around and that's to calculate the pitch yaw roll you know its orientation and this is thanks to the people on the KOS subreddit uh, I wouldn't have been able to figure out what the calculations for it to figure out its pitch yaw and roll were otherwise because it's it's been involved it's not like you're you know it, it's not the most intuitive thing necessarily so yeah, so this is it just getting its orientation right and figuring out its prograde heading and prograde pitch. And that's using these other functions, compass 4 and pro pitch. This is all stuff from the subreddit. So I wouldn't have come up with this on my own. So pro pitch, pitch 4, there's all little bits that were picked up so that it can calculate what its prograde is at. Now it's conducting a roll, and so this is part of mode 4, you can see on the dial KOS dialog. And that roll is this, if the altitude, radar altitude is above 110 kilometers, if the roll, uh, if roll, roll check, I don't know, anyway, it's just turning itself around, that's it. And this correction factor is to the pitch, because as you roll, remember the shuttle's engines are tilted. They're tilted down, well, it depends on your orientation, but they're tilted by 10 degrees. So we have to adjust our pitch based on the fact that the shuttle's engines are tilted. And that's this correction factor that gets bundled in. I'm trying to figure out where that gets bundled in, but... Oh, here, here. So, in calculating the pitch with this equation, there's this correction factor at the end. And I was looking over here at the lock steering heading. You could put the correction factor here as well. But it is here that we have that correction factor to the pit target pitch. And that's responding to the fact that we're in the midst of this roll and changing the orientation of the SSMEs. And then at 140 kilometers, meaning when we get into space, we go to mode 5. So, if necessary, it's going to continue the roll. So, we've got that there. Because, uh, you know, what if we get to 140 kilometers and we haven't finished the roll? Well, uh, it's handling that. But now it's doing a few other things. First of all, the thrust to weight, uh, the, th uh, the g force limit is 2.4 now. 
it's managing inclination. This is a new function that didn't appear before. So instead of just following the launch azimuth, it's now looking at its inclination. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't really looking at its inclination before. And so there's a function down here called ink manage. And there's a maximum deviation, which means how far away from the current prograde vector it can lean. So you can see in the game it's leaning about 10 degrees away from the prograde vector to the north. And that's because it sees that its inclination is not 51.4 degrees yet. And so it's correcting by that factor. And so this is all a matter of correcting by what it needs to in order to get to 51.4 degrees. And so that by the time and technically, I think if you just left it at the launch azimuth, it'd get to 51.4 eventually. But we want to get to 51.4 well ahead of when we shut off the engines, instead of just getting there right when we shut off the engines. So, we are correcting ahead of time, and then once it gets to 51.4 on the inclination, you'll see it'll wander back towards the prograde vector. And then it'll wiggle somewhat, uh, based on whether the inclination is leading one way or another. Um, I... so... When you're writing a launch script or something, there's three things going on. There's guidance, navigation, and control. I've left control to KOS, uh, I think completely in this script. Uh, so KOS is deciding how much to deflect the gimbling on the engine, how much to deflect control surfaces or RCS thrusters. That's control uh, in order to do what it needs to do. So I haven't told it what to do. A PID controller technically is what can handles the control what translates the where I need to go into what I need to do to get there so gimbling the engines and all that so that's what the PID controller is for um, this is guidance is me telling it where it needs to get to navigation is where it is so navigation is the stuff built into the direct calc here this is navigation and everything to do with trying to figure out where you're at, grabbing the inclination data, grabbing the speed, grabbing your altitude, that's all navigation. So most of the script is taking the navigation data and then producing the guidance data from it. And then KOS is handling the control. So we're uh, past mode five now and we're into mode six. Mode six happens when the time to apoapsis is less than 20 seconds, or if we are high enough and our periapsis is high enough so basically if we're going fast enough there's a whole other business about how it's managing pitch here as it's uh, nearing 7100 meters per second uh, it manages pitch so it's between 8 and 25 and the reason for that is releasing the external tank okay so as we get closer it's still managing the inclination but we want the vertical speed to be between 20 and 200. The reason for uh, with a regular rocket, you want the vertical speed to be zero when it's getting to mode six. So in my other launch scripts, this will be between 20 and negative 20, so that it's hovering around zero. But with the shuttle, you want it between 20 and 200 because that ensures that the external tank gets released on a suborbital tra trajectory and the shuttle is still heading up at that point, right? It's still got a vertical speed when it releases the external tank. So it sees that if the ship apoapsis is above the target periapsis minus uh, 50,000, and the ship periapsis is above that, it'll go on to mode seven. And this is more of the same actually, but it's refining the target pitch here. This is trial and error on my part. And then if the ship periapsis is more than 20 kilometers, and the ship apoapsis is greater than the target periapsis, uh, which uh, we set to 300 kilometers, so it is greater than that. It's at 355. Um, or the ship periapsis is greater than 50 kilometers, just in case we overshoot on one side. It shuts down the engines, waits two seconds, and if OMS start is zero, it shuts down the SSMEs, shuts off the gimbling on the SSMEs, stages off the external tank, activates the OMS thrusters, and closes the little doors at the bottom, the uh, external tank umbilical doors. And then it sets OMS start to one. And so that makes sure that this only happens once. Waits one second, and then begins its time warp, which is what it's doing right now. 
So if the time warp is set to zero and there's still two minutes to apoapsis, wait two seconds, set warp to one. So it's set warp to one and it's warping to apoapsis. If ETA to apoapsis is less than two and a half minutes, it'll come out of warp, which it has. Set steering manager, max stop. Okay, so this is the one time that I tell the, the KOS PID controller to do something different. And here I'm telling it the max stopping time should be 32 seconds because it's on RCS right now. You see, if it uh, by default, it's expecting to use engines and so it has a very tight max stopping time. If you leave it like that, it'll puff the RCS thrusters one way, then the other way, then the uh, one way, then the other way, and it'll oscillate like that. And it'll never get anywhere. So I set the max stopping time to 32 so it can very quickly turn to the prograde vector where it needs to go. And um, we continue calculating the direction, you know, our, our orientation. Make sure that we head to the prograde vector. Remember, the direct calc is necessary to figure out where the heck the prograde vector is so that I can point to it. And waits 40 seconds. That's allowing the RCS to turn to the prograde vector. So it gives it the time to do that. And then after that 40 seconds, it throttles up. And since the OMS engines are already on, throttling up will uh, ignite them and it moves on to the next mode so that we never do this again. One way to make sure that you never do a segment again is to immediately go on to the next mode. So that's uh, one way of doing it instead of toggling things like I did with the OMS start here. Okay, so mode eight, we are still calculating the mission time just in case though I don't use it ever again. Uh, making sure we're pointing to prograde, target roll is what it is, and uh, throttle is still up. And if the ship periapsis is greater than the target periapsis times, I allow a 99.5% thing. Uh, so that because it takes some time for the engines to shut down, uh, I give it some room. And then ship apoapsis is greater than target apoapsis times 1.01, .01, so a little bit above that. And the Okay, no, there's an optional thing. So it's either got a ship periapsis that's high enough, which means it'll be in orbit, or the apoapsis is pretty high and the ship periapsis is above 160 kilometers, which is safe. Then shut down the engines, wait two seconds and move on to the ending mode. So we see that it pretty much always triggers this condition and never gets to that condition, which is fine um, because getting to this condition would just entail more of an OMS burn anyway. So it gives me some leeway to, you know, decide whether I want to stay in the lower orbit or not. Uh, but yeah, it's because the target apoapsis, it already overshoots on the apoapsis side uh, before it releases the external tank. It always hits this one. And we always end up with a periapsis of 160 kilometers, which is fine for rendezvous and all that business. So it uh, shuts off, waits two seconds, goes to mode nine, uh, locks it all to zero. Uh, it already did that, but that's just to make sure. And there's, because it's based on my other launch scripts, so it doesn't necessarily always do the same thing. Anyway, unlock steering so that I can control it. Otherwise, throughout all this, we've locked steering. See, it always says locked steering. That means that I can't control it. If I knocked my joystick or anything, it won't do anything. Um, clears the screen and print launch program concluded. This isn't really, uh, it still displays that stuff because that uh, the data that you see on the screen there, the mode, apoapsis and periapsis gets printed here. And so it still prints that even though I did clear screen. So then it sets mode to zero and then nothing else happens except for this. <laughs> it, it still does this bit. But since mode is zero, it doesn't do anything in this block again, right? Until mode zero. And then when it's mode zero, it doesn't do that again. So at that point, the script stops looping through this segment of the script. It all it sees is functions down here. So there's nothing left to do and the program ends. So that's how it works. And I don't know what else to say about it. It does what it does. It works. <laughs> I mean, it just works. Uh, and yeah. Don't give me any suggestions. <laughs> All right, so I'll link the I'll link this version of the script in the video description below. Um, again, if you want to go a different inclination, that's what you change there. Different direction there. 
Otherwise, probably don't change a whole lot. You do need to set your action groups correctly, right? Uh, otherwise, it's not going to do the right things at the right time. So your fuel cells on six, your um, ET door on seven, the OMS engines on eight, the gimbling of the SSMEs on nine, and the SSMEs themselves shutting them off and on uh, on ten or zero, whatever. Okay, so hopefully that's enough. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like, and I'll see you next time.